is a great day for you. It's a great week. It's a great time for the class of 2009. And thank you for inviting me to be here to celebrate with you guys. know that I'd like to have discussions and talk. So I'm going to talk for a little while, reveal some deep personal secrets, and then I'm going to take some questions for the crowd. I have some notes. So you, now, I can't say that giving the last lecture was a lifelong dream of mine, but it's certainly been a three-year goal. nominated by the class of 2007, again by the class of 2008, but I realized that things happen for the best because they are so yesterday and you guys are now. In 2007, I'll give you some advice for life. If you ever have to be beat out by someone, be beaten out by your boss. Because Mark Whitty defeated me, and the next day I sent him a gracious thank you note, con uh, congratulatory note, telling him how happy I was for him. So, anyway, I know in my heart that Northwestern has equipped you guys to go forward and to change the world. Tonight, at this moment, the average IQ in the Cubby Bear is higher than any other bar in Chicago. Alright, so let me tell you how I got here at the Cubby Bear tonight. I started out in 2001 as a professor at Kellogg, and in spring 2005, whoever was supposed to teach marketing management in the VIP program pulled out because of visa problems, and I came in as a flyer. So, since then, I teach at Kellogg and the you guys, you undergrads, and I have to tell you, I like you guys so much better than the MBA students. The MBA students want a formula. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. They want a formula and a bottom line, and they don't know how to think. And I read these articles in the paper about how undergrads aren't literate and can't write and can't speak. And you guys put all that to rest. You guys think and you're terrific and it's been an absolute pleasure teaching you for the past few years. I just want to say thank you to three people. First of all, the brains of the VIP office, my boss, Lucy Millman is here. Where's Lucy? Along with her able-bodied assistant, Cindy Furman. Along with my husband, Peter, about whom you were. Now, as those of you who have taken courses with me know, he is a geek. And he's a dweeb, he's a nerd, and I use these terms very affectionately. Peter has a PhD in computer science. So you wonder, what is our private life like? Well, I, I wish I could tell you that every night we have these sizzling people over and have these wild parties. But that's not really true. Most nights, Peter invites a few friends over and they talk about home. When we want a romantic evening together, we turn to PBS and watch reruns of How It Works. We have 13 working computers in our house and he still uses a slide rule. Good points to it. First of all, they are really 
easy to buy presents for. Like two years ago for his birthday, I got him a pocket protector. He loved it. Then, for Christmas, I got him this little label maker. You go ching, 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 and it makes white letters on these fluorescent labels. So in our house, clothes dryer is labeled microwave, Jones phone, Jones office phone, and he uses it all the time. So one night, we're ready for bed, and I nod off, and I hear click, click. I nod off, I wake up in the morning, and every part of my body is labeled. And I thought, I thought, you know, this is truly weird, but I have to tell you, has my sex life improved since then? For you. The lesson for life is, if you're finding a friend or a partner or spouse, find a good match. Don't get someone and try to mold them to what you want. Rather, look for someone who shares your values, your interests, your desires, your wants. You can't change people. Now, Peter and I have been married for 15 years. He's still the best date I've ever had. But his ex-wife thought he was boring. And I don't understand how anyone with a PhD in computer science could be boring. <laughs> Some of you have parents who are divorced. And in 99 point, that's not something to cheer about. In 99% of the cases, it's not that somebody's wrong or somebody's right. It's that it's a bad match. And they don't share their friendship and their hearts and their souls. them and I deal with some child raising issues really really well some of the other students would like you guys to quiet down but my philosophy is you know <laughs> you don't have to take my class <laughs> All right. so I read these child raising books advice books and I used to nag them to be nice to each other until I read a book that's entitled Mom, Jason's Breathing on Me. And the advice it gives is don't interfere. You can't control their bickering, so if you don't see blood or bone, stay out. And I've stayed out. And they have developed wonderful negotiating tools and great retorts. For example, I was driving down the road with the two of them a few months ago, and Sasha said to Marissa, Marissa, you are really ugly. Now before, I would have said, be nice to your sister. I kept my mouth shut, and after about 20 seconds, Marissa said, you know, Sasha, we're twins and we look a lot alike, so you must be pretty ugly too. reading another book called, remember they're almost teenagers, Get Out of My Life, but first can you take me and Cheryl to the mall? All right, so you can prepare yourself for kids, but some things you'll never be prepared for, like questions about sex. No. And you know, I will take questions at the end. The first question, 
they ever asked. They're about three and a half, four years old. I'm in the car with my husband. And Marissa said, how did I come out of your body? And I blanched, but my husband has four daughters through a previous marriage, and he said, head first. Oh, yeah, we knew that, head first. Well, a couple of months later, they get more technical. Where exactly in your body did I come out of? I was alone, and this time I was prepared, and I said, oh, you came out the birth canal. Oh, yeah, the birth canal. So my advice for you is always tell them the truth, but not the whole truth, before they're ready for it. And importantly, when you have kids, remember you chose to have them, and they only have one childhood. She was staying with us for a while, and she took Stanley some food. And Stanley looked at her and said, cracker, cracker. And she looked at Stanley and said, Stanley, I'm sorry. I don't have crackers. I'm going grocery store later. And he looked at her and he said, banana. And she said, OK, I'll bring back a banana. The parents of the smart pets, my Maltese dogs, Oliver and Miles, are pretty dumb. Miles is clinically obese, the vet tells us. Yeah. Yeah. He weighs 11 pounds and should be 9 pounds. All right, so let me tell you, I teach BI 239 marketing management. I teach, cons I teach consumer behavior. And I also teach a course that lets me read what I want and think what I want to think about marketing ideology, which talks about why do people believe what they believe? Why do Mayans believe the world is going to end soon? Why do people believe Obama was great or McCain was great? Why do people believe in different religions? So that's, I think, probably the best course that I've taught since I've been here. Uh, I love movies especially foreign ones. Anyone wants some uh, movie advice, ask me. I like to cook. I never do housework. Advice for life, you're going to be so busy, something's got to go. Let it be the housework. Okay, now I have lessons for life, some of which I've talked about, for your spouses, your partners, and your friends find a good match. Don't marry, live with, or spend time with people who are unkind to you. And that goes across the board. Be nice to your kids, okay? You chose them. For your jobs, a lot of you are starting new jobs. Don't chase the money. Chase what you love to do, because otherwise you're going to get stuck. If you love to do what you're doing, you'll be great, and the money will follow. Other advice, if you're in a meeting or a class, say something at least twice. If you're not talking, why are you there? And if you're not talking, no one will notice you, and you won't get promoted, and you all are smart enough and good enough to do what you like. But speak up. candle at home or a special pair of shoes or some nice sheets that you're saving for a special occasion. Anybody? All right, use them now. All right, today is a special occasion. Next question, how many of you have credit card debt? Pay your bill every month. That's the most important thing you can do for your financial welfare. Three more pieces of advice. Don't be snooty to anybody. Be nice. Who's your favorite student? Uh, Neil Sales Griffin has just asked me, who is 